And now, back to the weather classroom. Can you imagine a little blade of grass like this being picked up and then driven into a tree like a nail? Well, a hurricane can do just that. To give you an idea of just how much punch one of these storms can pack, wrap your mind around this. Convert the energy released by a typical hurricane in one day into electricity, and you can supply power to the entire United States for nearly three years. Now that is a bag of wind. <laughs> are deadly storms. Pretty much everyone knows that. The wind alone is enough to uproot trees and power lines and cause all kinds of destruction. Winds can reach up to 150 miles per hour in a catastrophic hurricane. But in the past several years, it's the flooding that's been responsible for nine out of ten hurricane-related deaths. All that water being drawn from the ocean to fuel a hurricane? Well, it's got to go somewhere. So the rainfall from these storms floods rivers and streams and makes for dangerous conditions miles and miles inland. Okay, every time we hear about hurricanes, we always hear the experts talking about storm surge. And that's important. Here's why. Storm surge is what happens when the winds created by the hurricane literally push the sea up onto the land. Let's say this is our little beachfront town here. See how it's on fairly level ground and then just drops off into the water? Well, we call that the coastal shelf. And further out on a larger scale, the continental shelf. It slowly slopes off, making the sea shallow for a long way out. The rule is, the further out the shallow water goes, the higher the surge will be for that specific hurricane. Also, the surge goes up when the wind goes up. Now, let's say our little tourist trap here is right in the path of a hurricane. Hit it, Bob. OK, surf is definitely up. What's happening here is the wind created by the hurricane is pushing the water in front of it. Because the gentle slope of the coastal shelf makes the sea so shallow, the water just piles up until it has nowhere else to go but inland, and we get surged. Also, the wind created by the hurricane makes huge waves on top of the surge. Waves are often 20 to 30 feet high, sometimes higher, and that's what destroys so many buildings and houses. So, the bottom line is, when we get a huge hurricane like, say, Bob here, it displaces a lot of water, and that water only has one place to go. So much for a vacation. Thanks, Bob. Hurricane Andrew was the most costly natural disaster in U.S. history. When Andrew made landfall here in 1992, it was a Category 4 hurricane with winds gusting up to 200 miles per hour. Nearly 60 years earlier, just south of here in the Florida Keys, one of the only two known Category 5 hurricanes to hit the U.S. came ashore. It was called the Labor Day Hurricane, and it's still considered to be the most severe hurricane to ever strike the U.S. In 1969, the second known Category 5 storm to make landfall in the U.S. slammed into the Mississippi and Louisiana coast. Hurricane Camille had a 27-foot tidal surge and 200-mile-an-hour wind gusts. In six hours, over 30 inches of rain fell, causing terrible flooding and 256 deaths. Like Hurricane Andrew, a storm doesn't have to be Category 5 to be deadly. In 1900, the worst natural disaster in U.S. history occurred when a Category 4 hurricane struck Galveston, Texas. Not a single building escaped damage, and more than half were swept into the sea. When it was all over, an estimated 8,000 lives were lost. We've learned a lot about hurricanes. We know where they come from and how they form. We can even look down and track them as they move across the oceans with satellites. What we can't do is stop them from coming our way. So when hurricanes strike, all we can do is be prepared. First thing we want people to do is be concerned about their family. They need to have a plan for their family, and everybody in the family needs to know what they're going to do. 
there's a great deal of lessons to be learned from a hurricane. Unfortunately, we learned those lessons the hard way with Hurricane Andrew. We don't want anybody to have to learn those lessons the hard way. What they need to do is they need to be prepared. Every community is subject, especially the coastal communities, to having a great deal of wind and rain from a hurricane. You need to have a personal protection plan written, discussed with the family, worked out in the home as well as the neighborhood to know what everybody's going to do when the disaster is approaching because there is no time to make those plans at the last minute. It's really important for the public to understand that if they choose to stay on their boats, if they choose to try to ride out a hurricane and wait to the last minute to try to run from it, and they get in and have problems, get into distress, there is no Coast Guard to come help them. At that point, our boats have already been evacuated, our aircraft have been evacuated, we've shut down, we've, we've basically bunkered down until after the storm, and we will take the, the calls and we'll do what we can to monitor where they are, and as soon as the storm passes, we'll be out to help them. But during that, that critical time, there is nobody who can come get them. They're, they're on their own. Well, that's about it for class today. And as it turns out, the gang didn't really have such a tough time after all, huh? Hurricanes are funny that way. We know how they form and where they come from. But once they start moving, we're never quite sure of where they're going to go or how fast they're going to get there. While we were filming this very show, two tropical storms were born that threatened the United States. One turned away, and the other just sort of fell apart. They're unpredictable, and that's part of what makes them the deadliest storms on Earth. Now, I've got to go on to my next adventure. And sort of like a hurricane, there's really no telling where I'm going to end up. So, for the Weather Classroom, I'm Brandon. Later.